Hello to you, my fellow dark ones. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Last episode, if you guys remember, we did manage to make two refined EMC links. And today we have three more personal EMC links, which is amazing. That means we can proceed with getting a bit more industrialized. We want to automate all of these ingots that you see over here. However, before doing that, we need to summon two more watchers. That was the first one. And the second one. Well, actually, the only thing that I was looking for was the demon heart. I have converted four of the personal EMC links to the refined EMC link. And using some line matter and the demon heart which we just got, we can make the compressed refined EMC link. This is an amazing block because it can have 54 outputs. And yeah, the problem is that uh, we don't have that much EMC left, but it's fine. Don't you worry. I will fix it. Because what we're going to do is that we're going to change our ore miner into the nether ore miner. Like so. It's basically the same machine, it just has different blocks. Which I have just realized, I missed a few. It's good. We're fine. That should be the structure, and it does consume 30,000 RF per tick, which is a lot. But don't you worry, I will fix the power. Very soon. This resource miner is going to give us the basic power flower bonsai pot, which does generate 102 EMC per second. It's not amazing, but if it works... I don't have anything to complain about. I have upgraded the energy input and this guy consumes 30,000 RF. It's not something that we would be able to keep up at this very moment, but I just want it to run for a few iterations, that's it. I just want a few flowers, you know, for decoration purposes. But for our actual EMC, we do have a loop over here, if you guys remember. And I have hooked it up to our personal EMC link with a filter from Ender.io. It just inputs one dark matter every second or so. If I extract them all, then nothing goes inside the energy condensers. It's a bit tricky. But do we get the power flower? Not yet. You are supposed to get it. 5% chance. Okay. It's a garbage chance. But basically, that EMC link that you see down there is linked to our tablet and also the compressed refined EMC. You see, it's increasing. It's been a while, but our first power flower. Oh, it's a quest. Nice. Uh, so for the moment, you go over there and generate some EMC. It's gonna be really garbage, I know. But eventually, maybe we can upgrade it later on. I'm not sure. We will have a few of them. I think I have advanced on age, because mobs are becoming really tough. That was just a zombie. Is everyone tough? Well, you are not. Well, moving on, here's what we're going to do. These resources that you see over here do not have EMC. So we do have to craft them. And judging by how difficult this mod pack is and how resource intensive everything is, I think it's best that we consistently craft everything. And this is why I needed the refined EMC link. Because all the garbage that you see over here is just a mix and match of different items which have EMC. For example, the first item on the list is steel. We can use pulverized coal, but we can also make charcoal. And it's best that we make charcoal using a redstone furnace from thermal expansion so that we will get creosote oil. That means if I put one coal inside my EM ceiling and hook it up to the redstone furnace, it's going to receive coal and in return we get charcoal. Which means now if I add iron, that goes inside the induction smelter and we will get steel. Please don't pay any attention to the speed that we're getting the items, the speed is going to be garbage. Until I would be able to upgrade everything, but that takes care of steel. Using the exact same method, I have automated literally every single ingot that we had in Ender.io, as well as thermal expansion. And even crystal tine as well as treated wood. So I think for the moment we're actually doing fine. You might also notice that there are two alloy smelters over here which are not doing anything. That is because one of them is going to be for the crystalline pink ingot, and the other one is going to be for the stellar alloy, which, uh, well... They don't really have EMC. I mean, for one of them, you need grains of pisality and pink slime. None of them have EMC. And of course, for the stellar alloy, you need nether stars. Also, the speed is not going to be amazing. We're using double layer capacitors for most of them. And, you know, these guys are also signalum version. That takes care of most of the ingots that I need in order to progress. Now we need to do some botania. Okay, so it has been a crazy amount of time later because I ran into a very small problem, which I will explain very soon. I have done a ton of botania and we're using Keke Morris's in order to generate mana. And I mean a ton of mana. Also, since we have defeated the Guardian of Gaia several times, we had a few overgrowth seeds, which I'm using for the Keke Morris's. That will increase their production by a lot and I'm using a lot of that mana in order to operate one Lunium. What does it do? Good question. It's going to spawn a mob and when they are killed, you're going to get dungeon loot and a lot of that. I have actually thrown away a lot of them, so yeah. It's supposed to give you vanilla drops, but I'm thinking we're getting some rare items. Marshmallows. Okay, we get marshmallows. 
That's nice. It's food, I don't care. Generally speaking, 90% of everything that we're going to get is going to be garbage. For example, we don't need the ingots. Well, maybe mana still, that's useful. But it is the small percentage of drops that I'm interested in. One of them is capacitors. You see, Sagmil 4.13 or one for the powered spawner. There's actually a lot of them and that's good loot. The other thing that I'm interested in is this, recursive paper. So you might notice that there's eight of them and you actually find them as a dungeon loot. And so far, I think I have gathered seven of them, which is amazing. Oh, that's the eighth one. Okay. <laughs> Literally. I don't exactly know how this works, but if you want to make the Kikoku, you're going to need Essence of the Room. Surround recursive powder with papers, spelling the right word. I don't like puzzles, but there are puzzles, and I'm trying to solve the puzzle. But generally speaking, I think this was a very good idea. It does consume a lot of mana. However, now let us talk about a few problems. The Lunium has a huge range, and I mean huge. It didn't even care about the height, mobs were spawning literally up here, next to the portal even. So I had to dig it out. The original mob farm was this much, 7x7. Seven seven. Another thing is that this place was also supposed to be a place for killing pink slime. Unfortunately, they're not really good for your FPS. I swear that my FPS was down to 60. Now it's fine. Why is it fine? Okay, then it's fine. We have unlimited pink slime for some reason. Maybe they were getting stuck in the walls. That could be a thing. It's a good thing I checked it again. But anyways, we are not going to duplicate pink slimes at this very moment. There is something else that I want to talk about. So we have this mod called Advent of Ascension and I have different skills. There is a combat skill or hunting skill which is at 5 and that's not really good because there are some mobs that I have to kill and they require a higher skill level. If you are a few levels below them, then you can't really fight them, so you don't get their drops. But I have figured out how to upgrade that skill, so yeah, we have to turn you off. Just for a second. Do you see the green bar on top of the rammer head's head? That means we can fight them, and they're also going to upgrade our skill, because they're also hunters. I should have turned off the lunium, but it's fine. Remember, it's called Meatball Crap Advent of Ascension, so this mod is pretty important, I guess. But we are at level 12, which is perfect. We just need to go up to level 15. Okay, we are at level 15. We don't care anymore. There's a breach. <laughs> and the mob imprisonment tool is out. We get pink slimes. We're good again. So now that my hunting skill is at level 16, here's what we can do. There are these skill crystals that we get from our mob farm, and if I use them, that's also going to increase it. It grants experience to your lowest skill level, ignores skills below level 15. So we can easily increase that one. I have mentioned all of that because on the bottom row, you might notice that there is a heart. You know me. I love hearts. And that is one of the skills that I really want to be able to upgrade because apparently, according to the wiki, it's going to give you extra hearts. We do have the skill thingies, so once it reaches level 15, we can easily upgrade it. But for the moment, I'm looking for these, heart stones. So I just go, try to kill the boss as fast as possible and try to find it in a chest. It's not in every single tower. Oh, it's there. I forgot my magnets. I'm sorry. So basically, you just right click and you will get that. You pick it up and you gain experience. Also, with my advanced hunting skills, we can kill these guys. I couldn't until now. And yeah, they dropped the hearthstone. And there's a spawner. I can just farm it here. Okay, it's easier than the battle towers. I stay here. Spawn. I command you. I thought the thing with skills is an optional thing and it's just for fun, but no, apparently we have to do that. Because, for example, this long is something that we need, you know, in order to craft a few pieces of garbage, and until right now, I could not kill these guys. Also, uh, we are in a nuclear wasteland, so I do get radiation, which is not amazing. But let us see if I can reach level 15 somehow. Oh, we are at level 15. Nice. Also, I have found another coin. Bloodlust. I think that's going to help us do way more damage. But yeah, you might notice we have extra hearts. It is a bit of time later and it's actually the next day for me. I just woke up. And yeah, you might notice that we have tons of blue hearts. Obviously not all of that is because of my skills, it's because of Spice of Life. I finally did manage to eat 100 different types of food. I found a loophole in actually additions. But honestly speaking, our skills are doing fine. I'm... Happy with that? That was an enderman. I have also been checking the quest book and based on our skill level, there is one thing that we have to do and that is to fight a boss. But before that, since I do have a plan for the second half of the episode, uh, we need to upgrade our power situation. We do have good dynamos, not all of them are resonant, I do have to upgrade them, but our conduit is not keeping up. So I'm trying to make some cryostabilized flux ducts. That's it. Maybe it's just easier to come to the nether and kill a few blizzes? No, blizz. You're a blitz. You were actually a basalt. 
but who cares? Ah, you. I like you. Just the one jerk. Oh yeah, this is way better. Mobs are great. So here is one stack of cryostabilized flux duct, empty. Here is the actual cryostabilized flux duct. Oh, that was a quest. Interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, I have upgraded our power situation. Each dynamo that you see is generating us 1440 RF per tick, which is not that bad. And I just messed up my ender tank. Water went in. <laughs> Why is water still going in? That was a filtering issue with the cows, but we are generating 28,000 RF, which is not amazing. We only have 8,000 to spare. So maybe we have to alter our plans a bit and start getting into extreme reactors. That's not a horrifying recipe for just four blocks. <laughs> Thankfully, I have already started making steel, so that's not going to be an issue. Blood gem is something that we have to get from the nether, which exactly like netherite, it's not rare. We just ask one of our quarries to dig for it. Maybe two quarries? Graphite is basically coal in a furnace, which is not an issue. Nether tokens, we are getting them from our mob farm, so that's also not an issue. The only issue is steamed slime. So the tooltip tells you that you have to go with railcraft. There was a cheaty way using thermal expansion, which you would augment a dynamo, but that requires plutonium. <laughs> so yeah, we have to go with railcraft and we need tons of water. I have made a sequential fabricator in order to generate some infinite water sources. It's a pain to craft. You need two buckets of water every time. I'm using an ever full urn for water and that is very slow so let's upgrade these ones i think it's just the bronze yeah so now you would get water faster and you will craft it faster perfect let's get the boiler i also have a feeling that maybe we should go with the solid fuel boiler it just takes in coal nine boiler blocks and 27 boiler tanks that's the maximum size i think so here is your infinite source of water here is some fuel that doesn't go in you have to manually put it in it's fine why do I have extra? Well, temperature has to reach 100 degrees. We want to extract the steam, so water is on blacklist, a fluid transposer, and apparently it can't be any slime, it has to be the orange slime. So we just have to wait for steam, it's at 41 degrees. It's a bit of time later, I'm steaming some slime, we have a decent supply of steam, which is not that bad, I have also made a drum so that we would be able to bank some of that steam. Also I have set one of my builders in order to get me some yellow right, because I think that's the only acceptable fuel for the reactor, I'm not sure. But ladies and gentlemen, here are four stacks of reactor reactor casing. Amazing. It's not a quest. Did we skip something? Ah, okay. It's part of the quest. What the? Hello? Spiders. They're everywhere. Well, the easiest solution is that we just fly away and hope for them to despawn. At the start, this is not going to be a super amazing reactor. I'm planning to go with a 9x9, which should give us an internal space of 7x7. And yes, I think it's more realistic for the reactor to be underground and we would just see the control rods. I don't really know. I saw it on Chernobyl. Also, considering the fact that it is a 9x9, we are going to need way more casings. I just realized I wanted a block lower, or maybe two blocks lower. And one thing that you should remember is that this reactor is not for generating power. I mean, yeah, we are going to use its power, but we mainly want it for cyanide. So that we do get some plutonium, which is needed in order to progress further into the pack. Using the nether star essence that we got from our mob farm, it seems we can have four more nether stars, which is amazing. So we can have a building gadget, and then, you know, upgrade it to an unbreakable wand. I have also made four more stacks of reactor casing and this should be enough i hope maybe not we don't have that much left but basically inside we have a three by three of fuel rods and i think they have mentioned that the best coolant is going to be draconium block yeah so we just surround everything with purple blocks i can't really complain do we have enough casing seems we have enough yeah perfect it's not a reactor obviously yet because it does need to have a controller now it's a reactor we shall have a computer port because we want it to be controlled by a computer and we shall have our input and output like so. That's it. Oh no, power, power. So here is the power tap. I did mention that the goal of the reactor is not going to be generating power, but I really wanted to generate a bit more than like 12,000 RF which is the maximum this guy can produce. Let's add a bit more fuel rods. Since we also have a nuclear reactor, I thought maybe we should start controlling it using open computers. I'm going to expand this reactor by a lot, so it's a good idea. I'm installing the software, apparently. That takes a very long time. <laughs> okay. Yes, reboot. Thank you. So here we're going to have pastebin get, that code, and reactor lua, so the program will be called reactor. Very cool. Now we can run the program for reactor. Lovely. Courtesy of Lord Kraken. The 
the most amazing botanist. I don't think he makes videos anymore. Okay, bit of a change of plan. We're going with computer craft because open computer had a problem in this version of Minecraft, or at least in this pack. Unnatural hunger. Unnatural hunger is the easiest one to get rid of because you just have to eat rotten flesh. But I do have a ton of warp. Anyways, we are going with computer craft and this one does not seem to have a problem. As I have already mentioned, we are going to expand the reactor by a lot, maybe make it a bit more chunkier and we will go way down. What the program basically does is that it's going to play with the control rods. So whenever the buffer gets full, the control rods are going to be inserted. I have set the reactor program to extract all the fuel rods whenever we have less than 10% of power inside the buffer and fully insert them once we reach 80% power in our buffer. In that way, we don't waste that much fuel. You can actually easily do that with a redstone port, but the monitor looks cool. I like that. Also, I think, yeah, we have some cyanide, which is amazing. That's what we want. So we shall import it into our system. With the power situation solved, let's focus on the boss. Well, actually, there is going to be two bosses. In the quest book, we do have a chapter for super enchanted weapons and tools and armor. They're incredibly difficult to craft, but for some of them, we also need some boss drops. And the tools are amazing, and apparently you can extract all the enchantments that you have on them. For example, this is Soul Stealer 55? Holy and sharpness whatever holy and i thought maybe we should also summon some of the bosses and have a few fights so that we will get their drops this is the amphibiate lung and apparently we just have to drop it in water and someone should be summoned oops okay i thought it's not working he was summoned we just have to kill you you're fast for an amphibian and you do weird moves I just wanted to mention that it seems he has a ton of health. Oh, actually, 2204. This is why we need the OP armor and tools, so that we can get rid of these guys faster. Dude, die. Please, 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 please. Thank you. Okay, he dropped what he was supposed to drop, and what he dropped is called Coralis Polyp. It does have EMC, so we just needed the one. And basically what's that going to do is that it's going to give us a super enchanted blade, the Tidal Great Blade. How? Very good question. There is a mob called Mother Void Walker. <laughs> Has a weird name, but he's going to drop a sword. Apparently. Yep. I found one of them in the caves, so I thought maybe we should try it. Oh, they dropped it. Okay, where's the sword? We have the sword. As usual, we do need some weird ingots. The aquatic ingots. Oh, we needed 12. It's okay. Mobs are getting extremely difficult, so I kind of have to do this. But thankfully, we also have nether stars, so I can make the stellar alloy. We just need two more. And I think if I have not done anything wrong, that should be the actual blade, right? Oh my goodness. We have it. Let's go kill someone. It does 53 damage. My sword does 24. That was one hit. Let's try it on the Cyclops. Yeah, actually, Cyclops was horrifying. He has 22 armor. More than me. But for random creatures, this should be fine. Yeah, one hit. Amazing knockback. I like that. So on its own, it's probably not that impressive, but imagine combining it with all the other magic gizmos. Remember, we just want the enchantments. Sweeping Edge 10. Oh my goodness. But for the moment, life must go on. We need to get into wood. The reason that we have to get into wood is that wood is the key to getting into deep mob learning. Also aether, but we will get to that later on. Wood is hard enough on its own. I think everything in wood starts with the hammer, and then we need to have the anvil. The problem is the Stygian iron ingots, which until we get a compressor or a pressurizer, this is the recipe for it. For some reason, we need a weird looking spider eye, which is really fast. And then we just need basically mob drops. Maybe not. H.O.P. Graphite. I can't go with this one, right? <laughs> oh boy. We have to get graphite. I cannot express how happy I am that today we automated steel and treated wood. Otherwise, this would have been a huge pain. But yeah, this is our squeezer. And I have already made a pulverizer so that we can get some coke dust. And we do have a decent supply. So yeah, that is our HOP graphite. You need a lot. Oh, wait a minute. In order to make the cursed organic powder, this is the recipe for duping it. I need to do this recipe. Oh boy, I'm missing a lot of stuff. This one is fine. Somebody actually told me that I should have used this for netherite. This is super expensive. Thankfully, the Eye of the Storm from Reliquary has a crafting recipe, so we don't really need to find the charged creeper. We just needed some holy hand grenades. And voila. Wait a minute. What is ice crystal? And why do I have it? I have 61. Huh. While I was exploring, I went to this biome. Maybe somebody dropped it over there. But that takes care of almost everything except the Gorgon's head. So let's get a blindfold and go kill a Gorgon. Is this supposed to be my helmet? You can't see anything. I guess with the Gorgon, that's the point. 
Gorgons are supposed to be incredibly rare, but in this mod pack, I have seen their lairs several times. I actually saw two of them next to each other, so I think their generation has been bumped up. Oh yeah, that's one. Let's go in and try not to die. Actually, she's downstairs. There was a mechanic for this. There were levers. Okay, we go down. Dude, it's very dark. That's a water bucket. She died. <laughs> and we have the head. So, long story short. Here is our cursed organic matter. That should be a quest, no? Probably not. But now using crushed emeralds and HOP graphite, we can dabble it. Infinitely? That was nice. We need more HOP graphite. It took a bit of crafting and gathering resources, but here is our iron. Finally. I also really want to try and get as many as I can, so we will keep this recipe. I'm actually waiting for some more HOP graphite, that's it. But yeah. Finally, here is our Stygian Iron Anvil, and this is really the part that I hate about wood. So what do we need? Uh, this is the intern, it will show you the tier 1 mob farm, and we need 10 factory flesh casings. Okay, you're the one. Oh, you need soul stone. What? Soul stone, okay. Please don't have a durability. You don't. That's perfect. But I'm assuming this is the expensive part all the plates so here is our 10 flesh casing then bone casing upgrade base and factory tier 1 cap okay i'll get those i have been trying my best to make a factory and now we have to capture a mall i think we go with zombies cannot capture zombies why can you capture a cow okay honestly any mob will do so here is our controller core and we shall have the cow the controller core and the factory base and the hammer lovely we have the controller. As with a lot of our setups, this is going to be incredibly temporary. So I think the factory controller goes there. Then we set the intern to tier 1 and it should assemble it for me. Ah, you should use it on the heart. Where's the heart? So we just hold right click, I guess. It will be assembled. That is a garbage factory. Tier 1 cap, I already made it. I actually put it in the system. We're good. Don't you worry. I was very confused because I kept misplacing the factory controller. I was putting it here. So I made myself a factory layout and yeah, apparently you have to put it here. So now will you form? Oh yeah, you are. Good. So here is your power. Why do you say it's not a valid device? And then we just need to have a chest at the output. Right? This is going to be very garbage. But yes, do you see that orange shard? That's what we want. Which once we get it, we can put it inside a compressor from Tech Reborn to get Stygian Iron or a pressurizer from Nuclear Craft. Oh, we already got one. Lovely. I did mention that in order to get into deep mob learning, what we're going to need is a tier 2 shard from Boot. We already have this. Then we need the Hellfire Stone, which comes from the Aether. So guess what? I'm in the Aether. I haven't found that dungeon, but I have found several of the normal garbage dungeons. We have to kill him with a pickaxe, right? Yeah. Let's fly. Don't eat me. Oops. He does a lot of damage. I hope my pickaxe doesn't break. He has a ton of health. Also, you might notice that we're stuck in a cube with a cube. The door is gone. I'm actually curious. How are you supposed to kill him without flying? Maybe on the ground he's going to be easier. A bit. Okay. I think he's angry. He's moving faster. But almost dead. Come on. One more hit. Yep. Oh, we got a key. And we do get a treasure chest. Lovely. Oh, that's food. I like food. Let me see if I can find the other dungeon. That one seems to be rare. The way that you would find it is actually quite easy. All you need to do is to find these trees. The golden oak. And once you see a lot of them, that dungeon should be underneath. There is another boss in the Aether, high up in the skies, and he has a temple. Hello. Are we friends? Yeah, I probably wish to fight you. Well, we do need 10 medals. So we have to kill a few Valkyries. It's fine. They're not that tough. Well, summoning them is easy. We just have to walk on traps. I might have killed a few ones by accident, but here are your medals. There you go. Let it begin. Okay. Do we have to use a sword? Oh my goodness. I'm a bit worried about my armor. I don't want it to break, but she's almost dead. Yep. Let's see what kind of goodies we get. Lightning sword. Thank you. Neptune boots. And Valkyrie helmet. I'll go try to find the other dungeon. Could take some time. So judging by the amount of power I have left in my jetpack, you might notice that I have been exploring a lot. And, well, I found it. I do know that he deals fire damage, so let's drink a fire resistance potion. Hello. Yeah, I am brave. Do something. Maybe we should talk. No, I'm okay with your burning aura. I'm not a very chatty person. Can we start this? Yeah, we're still chatting. Okay. 
we're doing this. So we have to bounce the fireballs towards him. Oh wait, that's gonna be difficult. Because I don't think you can damage him with the sword, no. Okay, we hit him once. And now there's a minion that we can kill. I'm garbage at aiming. We can't use a shuriken, right? No, I missed. The worst part of it is that I have to hit him 10 times and I'm doing a garbage job. Ah, come on. There's one more hit. He's a pain. Yep. Finally. Honestly speaking, I just want one piece of stone. And thankfully, that one has EMC. Let's go home. And yeah, now that I have killed him, you might notice we have knight in the aether. There's nothing else here, right? Well, there's a key. Phoenix gloves. Well, we just take everything. Why not? Like anything else in this mod pack, I think we just have to do this once. I just crushed some redstone against a block of coal and I got suit covered redstone. I have also been making some rosite plates. And what else do we need? That's it, basically. I wanted to keep that recipe. Okay, maybe we don't need to anymore. But we do have some HOP graphite. I'll finish the recipe. Because honestly, after this, we will have enough shards. <laughs> and I don't really have to manually do this again. But here is our suit covered plate. And we're done with deep mob learning, I hope. Because one of the things that we need is a deep learner. That's okay. Blank data models are fine. I do have a ton of dragon scales, but sea serpents were a bit short. Let's get a few machine casings. Because from now on, the only thing that we need is some pristine shulker matter. And that's it. So I need a data model for shulkers. So here is one simulation chamber. And hopefully my plates are ready. Perfect. So here is a loot fabricator. The only thing remaining is that... I need a data model for shulkers. In this version, deep mob learning seems to be a bit different. We just need to have a shell, which we got. Then we need to combine it with the data model. Now we can put it inside the deep learner and, you know, kill the mobs. Yeah, we're gaining experience. We need to kill six, which shouldn't be that difficult. They're everywhere. Yeah, it's now basic. Thank you. Another thing is that I think we should take one of them home. Yeah. You will do. It took me ages, but we finally have some pristine shulker matter. That means from now on, instead of using this recipe, I can just use this one in order to make the suit covered plate. And you know, later on, we can also start getting some nether stars through deep mob learning. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.